Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, how did it happen? What did Dr. Barry say? Well, he... When I was here at the hospital this morning, you didn't know a thing about it. And then no, all it... of a sudden, you call me up and... Hey, tell... wait a minute, wait a minute. One question at a time, You call me up and please. tell me to bring the chariot to you. David, tell me how did it happen? You're coming home from the hospital. Simple as pie. You didn't threaten Dr. Barry, did you? Didn't lift a finger. Then how did it happen? It seems to me that you've asked me that question already. Well, you haven't answered it already. Oh, I can't tell you how excited I am. You're coming home. How did it happen? Now, there you go again. Oh, I won't ask you anymore, but come on, tell me how did it happen. Well, Dr. Barry walked in and he looked at me and he said, um, Young man, how are you feeling today? Yes. I looked at him and I said, uh, Feeling chipper, Dr. Barry, feeling chipper. Well, are you? What? Feeling chipper. You think I'd lie to the good doctor? Yes, I think you would. Wouldn't you? Now, wait a minute. Do you or don't you want to know how it happened? Oh, go on, go on. I didn't say a word. And as I said before, I said, feeling chipper, doctor. Mm-hmm. He says, uh, uh, any pains, any headaches, any discomfort? And I said, not a one. He said, well, in that case, son, I don't see as to why you can't take yourself home. Call your wife. Tell her to fetch you. As far as I'm concerned, you are discharged. It was as simple as all that? Mm-hmm. Simple as all that. Now, David, what else did he say? Now, wait a minute. I'm ready to go. Are you ready? Did you pay the cashier downstairs? Mm, I certainly did. I've never before been so happy to part with your money. It was like paying bail. That's a nice way of putting it. To think that tonight you'll be home. Oh, darling, I've missed you so. Now, come on, come on. Get me out of here. Stop talking. My bag is downstairs. Do- don't you think we ought to call for a wheelchair or something. No. Get an orderly to push you out of the hospital. When I leave this hospital, I leave it under my own power, thank you. You too good for a wheelchair? Much. Conceited. Besides, I've been walking for years. Nothing has ever happened to my walking. You never walked around with a concussion and a broken collarbone before, either. Quit reminding me. Besides, I'm not going to have them all my life. You're going to have them another couple of days. David, please be a mere human and call an orderly. No. There's not a chance to make you change your mind? Not one chance. What did Dr. Barry say about it? He didn't. Look me in the eye and tell me he didn't. Now, come on, come on. Either we go home or I stay here for good. All right. I give up. I don't understand why you have to make it so hard for me. Why won't you just let me take care of you gracefully? Because I've had enough being taken care of gracefully to do me for the rest of my life. David, are we arguing? Bet your life we're arguing. Then all right, walk. But for heaven's sake, take my arm like a gentleman and walk slowly. Say, how old do you think I am? I'm old enough to know better. How do your legs feel? Now you look down and tell me how many there are kicking around. Just the usual two. That's strange. I could have sworn I had four and a half, all different lengths. <laughs> well, all right, here we go. You know, sometimes I think you're more trouble than you're worth. If I didn't love you so much, I wouldn't bother with you for two minutes. That's a nice sentiment. Thank goodness your room is right next to the elevator. Just a few steps anyway. Here, I'll I'll ring for it, darling. I could walk a mile. Honestly, you dope. Don't you realize you don't have to pretend to me? I was in a hospital not so long ago, remember? I know what it's like to get up after being in bed a while. You've been in bed ten days, and I was in bed only three when I got up. But you had a baby, and you're only a woman. All the more reason. David, guess what? I guess what? What? The car is downstairs. No. It's all repaired and fixed, just in time to bring you home. Yeah? It's the age of mechanical wonders. What do you mean? The car was banged up 20 times worse than I was. Fenders were torn up, the... Top was knocked in, a radiator smashed. My top was just knocked in. <laughs> I thought it would take months to get it fixed, and here it gets patched up quickly as I did, quicker even. It's running around just as if nothing had happened to it. What's good enough for my car should be good enough for me. Hmm? Mm, that's what you think. Where's that elevator? David, aren't you going to say goodbye to the lady next door? I am not. Look at all the flowers she has 
dozen. Claudia, get your nose out of that room. Here's the elevator now. Now step carefully, darling. I am not blind. Oh, so you aren't. Mama and the baby can't wait to see you. Ground floor. They both said so? Mm. Baby spoke for Mama. Oh, and Fritz and Bertha, since I've told them they're trying to pile up all sorts of things to entertain you and feed you and tell you about them. <laughs> You'd think I'd been sick for all the fuss, wouldn't yes, you? Yes, isn't it silly? <laughs> but it's a nice hospital. Very grateful to it because you're leaving it. And, David, don't, don't walk so fast. I, I can't keep up with you. little Miss Tactful. Well, I'm learning. Too well. Here, I'll hold the door. Boy, Thanks. this is one place I don't care if I never see again. I don't blame you. But I hope I go to the hospital again soon. I don't want Bobby to be an only child. And as spoiled as his mother, I suppose. Thanks for the compliment. Now, here is the car. Doesn't it look wonderful? Looks very I managed good. to park it right in front of the gate. Aren't I brilliant? Oh, brilliant. Oh, here, I'll, I'll If you lay out. a hand on me now, now, get out of my way. I suppose you want to drive. Well, you're not. Oh, no. It's about time you realized I'm a good driver. Yes, I suppose it is. Mm. I suppose when a man's had an accident in a car, he loses his right to criticize his wife's driving. For heaven's huh? sakes, David, everybody, including you, knows that accident wasn't your fault. Yeah, sure, sure, I know. David, do you realize just a few more minutes and we'll be home? Just wait till you see the progress we made on the barn. I can't wait. How beautiful the farm looks with the leaves starting to turn. And how big Bobby's gotten in just these ten days. (laughs) Well, here we are. See the house around the curve? Does it look any different? Oh, and David, look, see up there right behind the house. Can you see? Yeah, Even from here, you can see the work they started to do on the barn. H- how do you feel, darling? Oh, me, me, I, I'm all right. I, I feel pretty good. Yeah, there's the barn. Say, they've really gone to work on it, haven't they? Mm. <laughs> mm. Looks good. Everybody's been simply wonderful. They were men working for a cause, and you were the cause. I was the cause? Yes. They wanted to surprise you with everything all finished before you came home. And then here, all of a sudden, you are. Yep. Here I am. Boy, oh, boy. Mm. The place sure looks beautiful. Doesn't it? Fritz has been working like a Trojan. He didn't want you to think he'd slackened up just because you weren't home. Yeah. Everything seems to have survived pretty well. Except me. No, including you. Oh, now I know you've been sick, all these compliments. You tired? Tired of your questions. I don't blame you, so am I. Hey, you stay where you are. I'll come around and open your side of the car. I'll get Fritz to bring the bag in. Don't you dare touch it. I won't. I don't think I could pick up a match. Good. Anytime you want your pipe lit, you call me. I'm going to love taking care of you, and I'm going to be good at it, too. Yeah, too good, I know. Well, if it's not the squire himself. David, how are you? Mrs. Brown, I'm fine. You look fine. Yes, much better than I expected. Say, you sound as if you expect me to bring home a corpse. Not a strong, healthy young man. Come into the living room, David. I've got everything ready for you. Well, you two women have certainly discovered the meaning of the word efficiency, (laughs) haven't you? (laughs) Look, David, Mama's fixed the sofa for you. See, she's got your evening paper on your table, your pipe, your tobacco. You won't have to move for a thing. Oh, David, it's good to have you home. It's been very lonesome having no one to talk to but Claudia. That's a nice thing to say about your only daughter. I haven't had an intelligent conversation since the day you left, oh. David. Mm, same goes for me, Mrs. Brown. Sit down, darling, and put your feet up. Would you like a blanket? What for? It's a perfectly beautiful day. I don't need a blanket. Too good for a wheelchair. Too good for a blanket. Nag, 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 nag. You made me what I am today. This house is very comfortable just the way it is. David doesn't need a blanket. Saved, saved in the first round by his mother-in-law. I am outnumbered. I bow. Listen, we'll all have dinner in here. I'll put up a card table, and that way we can all eat together. No, no, I'll come into the dining room. Will not. I love eating on a card table. It's sort of like an occasion. And, David, I... I fixed a bed for you in the den so you won't have to climb the stairs for a few days. Say, what am I, an orchid? Yes, 
The only orchid I've ever loved. Oh, darling, please look happy. Smile. I'm happy. And you never know it. Claudia. Yes, Mother? We'd better tell Bertha we wouldn't have dinner in the dining room. And uh... How about coming in and lending me a hand with a card table? All right, Mama. David, be good while I'm gone. I'll be good, but only if you stop treating me as if you were my governess. Well, I'm going to have to be your governess for a few days. Please don't mind too much. Welcome home. Welcome home yourself. Mama, you in the dining room? Yes, right here at the sideboard. I'm taking off the silver. Mama, I'm sort of worried about David. He, he even complimented my driving. That's bad. He'll be all right if you are. Me? David's used to being the man in the family. Now, all of a sudden, he finds the wife he's had to protect is not only his wife, his mother, his nurse, and his governess as well. That's just what he called me, his governess. That's all I expected. I wish there was something I could do, something to make him feel that nothing's changed, that I still need him terribly, more than ever now. He'll find out for himself. Poor David. I've got so much to learn about husbands. Only I didn't love him so much, it'd be simpler. I wouldn't give you two cents for it. <laughs> love certainly makes people complicated, doesn't it? Maybe it's vice versa. Maybe people make love complicated. Maybe you're right. Well, I'm going to turn over a new leaf, Mama. You're right. David is the man in the family, and he has a right to be his own boss. I'm not going to be a pest or a nag. It's going to be difficult enough for him without that. I'm not going to tell him anything anymore. No more advice, no more orders, no more scolding. Fine resolutions. Mm, you wait and see. I'm going to do it. It'll take self-control, but I'll do it. Say, what are you two women looking so serious about? David, what are you doing up? Get back to your couch this instant. Oh, Mama, what have I said? Coke on the job is practically taken for granted in industry. Your day's chores are probably every bit as hard as though you worked in an officer factory. So you deserve to enjoy the pause that refreshes with ice-cold Coca-Cola, too. And you can easily, if you keep plenty of Coke on ice. Why not get a carton at your drugstore or grocery today? Then it'll be ready for you when you're ready for it. And you can work refreshed, as your men folks do. Mr. King, could I have a word, word with you? Well, certainly, Miss Brown. When you're ill or convalescing from being ill, do you like attention? Well, of course, some. Is that all the hint you can give me? Well, frankly, I, I think I want attention, but I also want to feel that I'm still the boss. Just as I thought. <laughs> Man is a very vain animal, Mrs. Brown. Even the best. Well, maybe tomorrow Claudia will find a way to let David know he's... Still the man of the house. I think so. If there's a way, <laughs> Claudia will find it. Sure. Uh, Mrs. Brown, please tell David I'm glad he's home, will you? Why, of course I will. Now, do please go on with what you're saying. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying... Au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>